Hey there folks, today I'd like to take a casual peek into the SH Figure Arts Masked Rider G3 from Bandai. This set was first available in 2010 and originally sold for about 3,000 yen. I got this set in 2013 when I purchased it from Jungle Special Collector Shop which is a uh, Japanese secondhand uh, pop culture web store and uh, I'll post a link uh, to the store down below and uh, the set cost me only 2100 yen uh, which uh, averages about uh, 21 22 dollars uh, at the time I'm shooting this uh, video taking a look at G3 in the packaging you can see the uh, technological common uh, writer here uh, from the show common writer Agito uh, very cool. This is uh, the first iteration of the G3 suit and uh, pretty nice and uh, you can see it comes with uh, accessories. Uh, one you can see uh, in the packaging here the other ones uh, are a, a little bit hidden behind the packaging here and uh, the packaging is in the figure arts uh, earlier style uh, of the gray box uh, with a small window showing the picture and the name of the figure uh, along the side in black and also a black and white picture of the uh, character from the show down here you can see the Toei uh, seal of approval and uh, I can see here Kamen uh, Rider G3 and uh, you can also see the show logo down here on the side we have uh, SH Figure Arts and the Mask Rider G3 uh, along the, both sides of the packaging and as well as at the top and uh, some writing in Japanese on the bottom. Here we have the back of the packaging with G3 in various poses here and also you can see some of the various accessories. Uh, that come included with the set. Uh, at the top uh, edges here we have more uh, writing in Japanese as well as uh, down along the bottom. Now we'll be right back and have G3 out of the packaging. Okay we're back and we have G3 out of the packaging and as you can see uh, the figure does come with quite a few accessories and we're gonna go ahead and go into those. And first up we have here uh, the, I guess, uh, parts list. It's basically a pamphlet that pretty much comes with all of the uh, figure arts uh, figures. Uh, you can see uh, how all the hands can be uh, placed onto the figure. And uh, you have a, a grapple hook and a saw blade and blaster and how to use all of that. And uh, got you know, writing in Japanese, got the the uh, show logo there for Agito and more writing in Japanese down here so pretty cool and now the uh, set uh, comes with a total of eight hands uh, two of them are already attached to the figure and those are, are a, a pair of closed fists uh, they also provide six additional hands here uh, the first two we have are a pair of uh, I guess open splayed hands uh, pretty nice and uh, two fingers here uh, are slightly curled in so that's pretty cool and you have a pair of uh, trigger fingers uh, mainly for the blaster and uh, I guess you can wield it in either hand there so they give you uh, a pair of those and then you have a pair of gripping hands where uh, one of them in particular uh, is used for the uh, saw blade on there and the detail on the hands are actually quite nice uh, the back of the hands have some padded armor there you can see the paint detail and sculpting detail on there is actually quite nice I've got that nice metallic blue and silver combination pretty cool next thing uh, we have is uh, the sidearm for uh, G3 uh, it's a pistol with a scope on it 
and it's actually nicely detailed. It even has here a little uh, opening. I think uh, this is for the uh, shell casings uh, when he fires uh, his rounds from this pistol. Well, the, shell, the shell casings will come out over here, eject out of there. So they actually sculpted uh, a little tiny uh, opening there for that. So that's actually kind of cool on there. And the uh, pistol grip hand uh, can uh, wield it uh, adequately. Let me just see if I can put it on here. There we go. And it has a solid grip to it, so it's not uh, a problem at all. And I'll just show some more of that detail on there. Uh, pretty cool. Now, um, one uh, neat little accessory that I wasn't expecting because I didn't see it in the pictures uh, in the collection book that I have that uh, had a uh, G3 set. Uh, they didn't show this, uh, but it was on the show. It's basically a uh, grenade launcher or rocket launcher accessory which is pretty cool. Let's see if I can get it into focus here. There we go. And uh, you can see this is the uh, barrel right there where the grenade would or, or rocket would come out. And yeah, uh, here's a, uh, basically where you would place this blaster onto. You attach it to the blaster and uh, this top part uh, goes where the barrel of the pistol goes. And you would slide it in right there and then you have this uh, I guess a pistol and rocket launcher or grenade launcher uh, combination which is pretty cool and uh, G3 did use this on the show so that's uh, pretty cool to have this here uh, even neater feature here is this slide mechanism for uh, I guess loading the grenade launcher it does actually slide back and forth which is very very cool and it's painted in uh, that uh, similar color of uh, metallic silver. So uh, very, very cool uh, to have this uh, attachment on here. Next uh, accessory we're going to take a look at is uh, this grapple hook. Now, I don't remember seeing uh, G3 using uh, this in the show. I've gotten as far as uh, G3X's first appearance, so... Uh, if G3 is used later on in the show, maybe the, the grapple hook is uh, shown. I haven't gotten that far yet, but as far as uh, I've gotten, uh, I haven't seen this actually being used. And this is actually a pretty neat looking uh, grapple hook. Now, it's non-functioning. It's just a, a, a sculpt here, so which is unfortunate, but uh, it's still uh, very uh, nice because it's very... Uh, well detailed in the sculpt. You can see the hook here, a three-pronged hook, uh, and uh, you see some painted detail in there, some red and some red here. And then you have that metallic blue paint on here. And just looking at the sculpt, it's just very, very nice. Very cool looking. Uh, even the detail on the wire, uh, the zip line uh, wire, which is uh, very nice. It, you could tell that it's uh, metallic uh, wire, uh, even though it's just sculpted plastic. But they went to the details. They even um, sculpting the twists in the wire on there and how it uh, coils around this uh, device. And they even uh, sculpted uh, some trip uh, line uh, wire or zip line wire right here. I guess it's supposed to thread through uh, the spool and into the uh, grapple hook. Which is very, very uh, good uh, attention to detail. Which is very nice. Now this attaches to the figure uh, via peg hole. So basically you don't uh, put a hand in here. You just take the hand off of the figure here. And just pull that here and... Uh, Basically, you just peg that in to the uh, peg and uh, attaches on uh, quite securely. So that's uh, kind of neat. On there. Next uh, accessory we're going to go ahead and take a look at is the saw blade, which is uh, very nice. And uh, this uh, was uh, shown on the uh, 
Kamen Rider Agito show uh, early on, and I'm trying. I think you mean as early as the first episode, and uh, it's very nice. And uh, you can see the details. This is where the hand would go in and load. Uh, you can see uh, like it looks like a joystick handle there uh, for the hand to grip. And uh, this actually does fold out and uh, locks into place uh, via pegs here into a saw blade and you can see the blade here is very nice attention to detail here uh, it's painted in all silver it would have been nice to have a little bit of different paint on uh, portions of the blade here and in the, in the, what looks like tubing here uh, but it's still very nice in all silver uh, but uh, maybe a darker shade of gray would have been nice or a different color to just make it uh, pop out even a little bit more but uh, the detail still there and is uh, quite nice uh, they even have detail here of the uh, police department logo uh, that uh, G3 is a part of and uh, he's part of the SAUL unit S-A-U-L unit I can't remember the acronym off the top of my head but uh, the U stands for unknown and uh, because they, they battle these uh, unknown creatures uh, uh, that are on the show but uh, that's pretty cool now the instructions on uh, placing this on the figure show that uh, the bottom panel here pops out where you can place the hand uh, onto the uh, joystick handle but uh, mine seems to be stuck and uh, I don't want to uh, I really don't want to try too hard in case I uh, snap a part off and uh, it becomes unusable um, but uh, you could still uh, place the hand on the figure or on the device uh, without having to pull that bottom uh, portion of this out uh, basically this actually articulates so that's kind of cool and that uh, reveals more of that joystick handle and basically you can just slip on the uh, hand grip on here just right on top of the oh looks like uh, mine popped out uh, I had a hard time earlier trying to pop that out uh, but um, I guess I don't have to worry about that anymore hopefully nothing broke <laughs> but uh, basically you slip the hand on top of the grip and as per instructions, uh, you would just uh, place this bottom uh, piece back in. So I guess I was just trying too hard, uh, trying to get that off earlier. But uh, that I guess snaps back in. And then basically, you just take a, a grip, uh, the hand grip, and place it onto the uh, figure there. So and. Um, I guess uh, that makes it a lot easier to pop out now. Uh, but uh, pretty cool, uh, pretty cool device. Uh, lots of articulation points for an accessory here uh, with this sliding mechanism here and uh, the uh, saw blade there, a retractable saw blade. So very, very nice. Now taking a look at G3 here and uh, it's a very nice figure. Uh, now G3 is one of my uh, more favorite writers on the show. I really uh, like uh, G3, at least the character that inhabits the G3 suit. Actually there have been several characters that it inhabited the suit. Uh, but uh, I do like the main hero uh, that um, occupies uh, the suit. Uh, Kawiza? I, I can't pronounce his name correctly. Uh, but uh, uh, he is uh, the main character uh, from episode one, starting from episode one, that inhabits the suit and then later inhabits uh, G3X. But uh, this G3 suit is uh, basically a technological uh, mechanical suit to enhance uh, the uh, user and uh, is uh, pretty cool. And uh, this uh, figure does represent uh, G3 uh, rather well uh, on the show. Uh, I, I do have uh, uh, some issues as to the likeness. I think uh, the, the frame is a little too lean for uh, what represents the character on the show, but I think that's more due to the figure arts uh, design. Uh, figure arts uh, does tend to produce leaner figures. Uh, but uh, 
Uh, especially on the legs here, uh, I think the legs are a little too thin or narrow, but like again, I think that's more a figure arts design. And uh, it would have been nice to have, I think, thicker or more armored looking legs. Uh, but it's still uh, pretty nice uh, uh, overall, it's, even though it's uh, a little leaner. Uh, the design on here look, uh, represents it very well uh, on the show. And uh, taking a look at the head sculpt, you can see uh, it's very, very cool on here uh, with the compound eyes especially. Uh, this transparent red uh, plastic used for those eyes and then some sculpting um, underneath that. I'm not sure if you can catch the detail uh, within the eyes. It's actually uh, very, very cool. And then you have the antenna here. Uh, now, uh, tends to be common throughout common Rider shows to have these uh, antennas on these uh, riders. I, I think that's more of a design aesthetic. Uh, more, I guess, nods to the original common uh, Rider. Uh, but uh, it's pretty cool. I guess you can explain it on the show here for this particular uh, uh, character. You could use those as a remote uh, antenna for communications. But uh, you got that design element here. And it's made of a harder uh, plastic. so And it's very thin. So you don't want to be too rough on it. Uh, it'll probably snap off if you uh, uh, place too much pressure on, uh, on these antenna. Uh, but it's uh, very well detailed. It's in, in this nice silver paint, uh, metallic uh, silver. And uh, you also have some painted detail here of red and black, which is very cool. And then you have, again, more of that silver on the mouth area. And uh, metallic blue uh, here for the uh, head. Now, uh, that's the color scheme for G3, uh, metallic blue and silver, which is uh, very nice. You can see some more sculpting detail along the head here as well. Uh, you got this nice, uh, I would think, uh, I think these might, might be uh, cameras. Uh, at least one mounted uh, right here. Uh, because uh, they, there is a, a unit, uh, part of the G3 unit in a trailer that monitors uh, G3's activities and his uh, power levels and st such. So uh, that's uh, kind of cool that they have this here, uh, like a camera-like device which is uh, pretty cool. Looking at the uh, rest of the figure here, you can see uh, the armored uh, padding here uh, for the uh, G3 unit. Uh, very cool, uh, nice detail again on the sculpt. You even have uh, what looks like um, a star pattern. I don't know if that's for the police department that he uh, represents, which is uh, very cool. And you can see also uh, on the arms all this nice sculpting detail for the armor along the arms and uh, underneath you have straps that go uh, around the arms here so you can see that he's uh, pretty much uh, unarmored here uh, underneath uh, it's more of a I guess a leather type suit or uh, I'm not sure if it's a, a, a rubber suit uh, that he uses or leather uh, but it's uh, kind of cool and uh, looking over here in the back, you can see he has a backpack type unit. I'm not sure if that's like a power supply or not. Uh, it really isn't explained on the show, but it's kind of cool. Uh, it does have this handle here, which is uh, interesting. I don't remember seeing that on the show, but it, maybe I just didn't notice. Uh, but it's, uh, it's kind of cool. It does restrict the articulation a bit. Uh, we'll go into that in a little bit. But uh, pretty cool. And then you also have this belt area here, which is uh, kind of neat. Now this uh, here is not like the typical Common Rider driver belt. Uh, it's just a, uh, a fully attached uh, piece here, sculpted piece. And uh, this is supposed to represent, I believe, uh, G3's uh, power levels. It does fluctuate uh, this red here. It's a, like a LED display uh, and it's a uh, gauge that uh, I guess uh, when his power runs down, uh, the red meter would go down. So that's uh, kind of cool on uh, how they painted that there. And you got some uh, painted green as well on there. So it's kind of cool. And then you have some more uh, armor here on the legs. Again, uh, just like the arms, it's not fully armored. Uh, you just have straps uh, going on the back area and then revealing more of that uh, bodysuit. 
uh, underneath, which is pretty cool. And then you have here uh, some knee uh, armor and shin armor. And uh, you can see all this detail here, painted detail, as well as sculpted detail. But uh, I really want to point out the painted detail. You can see these little slivers of silver. And it's painted not just here, but also along the leg here and uh, on the arms. It's very, very cool because uh, they could have just gotten away with just full uh, blue and not paint those at all. But uh, the attention to detail is just very nice. Very, very well done. And here uh, we have uh, the boots uh, for uh, G3. So, and you even had some uh, treads uh, design on the bottom of the feet. So, very nicely sculpted. Uh, I just really like the uh, design of this uh, figure. Now going over articulation for G3, uh, the head is on the neck with a uh, double jointed neck, uh, jointed at the uh, top and bottom of the neck. So with that combination the head can move uh, up and down, uh, although the upward movement is a bit restricted due to the collar around the figure there. Uh, but you can get it uh, up and down as well as uh, all the way around and uh, even uh, tilting uh, left to right so uh, and uh, circular uh, movement around the base of the neck as well so that's a nice range of movement there the shoulder pad armor uh, does uh, flip up and down on a hinge uh, to allow greater movement of the uh, arms at the shoulder and the shoulder are on a combination of a hinge and swivels so the arm can go all the way around uh, as well as uh, out about that far and uh, in and there's an additional swivel uh, or ball socket uh, joint here uh, you can really see it uh, where you can move that around to provide uh, more movement uh, forward and back as well as uh, up and down uh, really uh, to extend the range of articulation for the arm so uh, that's uh, kind of nice. The arms at the top of the bicep can go all the way around and there are uh, double hinges on the elbows so you can bend the arm about uh, that far in and uh, this far out and the hands are joined at the wrist with a bald uh, hinged and double peg uh, joint so you can uh, twist the hand all the way around and uh, depending on the hinge position you can get it side to side and if you uh, turn the hand uh, you can actually get it uh, in and out and you can position that hinge so you can get the in and out movement uh, at different uh, locations or side to side movement depending how you position the hand so uh, kind of nice range of articulation there. There are two points of articulation uh, for the upper torso, uh, one at the uh, upper half of the upper torso and one at the waist and they're both uh, ball joints uh, but uh, it's very difficult to get access to the one at the waist. Uh, you really can only uh, move uh, the the uh, upper half of the upper torso uh, pretty much in uh, circular movements, uh, basically ball jointed movements, so circular movements uh, forward and back and a little bit difficult on the back because of this handle like area that runs into the belt uh, but you can get it uh, also side to side as well and you can get this uh, lower half of the upper torso moving in combat while moving the upper half of the torso uh, you just can't get direct ass access uh, with your fingers it's because of the narrow uh, uh, access area here uh, but uh, you can move it by applying pressure onto that lower half of that torso on there to uh, provide better articulation for the uh, upper torso here. The uh, lower torso here it does not articulate at the waist so it's really just the upper half here and uh, not typical as uh, more common, uh, more I mean I should say newer figure arts is the uh, leg articulation at the hip. Uh, usually uh, I've seen with newer figure arts they have that additional hinge to allow you to pull the leg down but uh, this particular figure does not have that. 
it's just a combination of swivels and hinges or one hinge and uh, one swivel and it allows you to pull the leg uh, upward about this much uh, before you run into uh, issues uh, with articulation with the um, sculpt here uh, but it can uh, move upwards downwards and back and out to the side uh, on that hinge so uh, that's uh, tip more typical of like the DC Universe Classics type uh, articulation now this uh, armor piece is made of a softer rubbery type material so you can provide more range of articulation on this leg at the hip you just have to move that piece uh, out of the way and it is uh, soft and rubbery so you can um, allow it to move uh, better with the leg you just have to be careful you don't tear into that because it's attached to the belt area there and uh, there is also a uh, swivel uh, joint at the top of the thigh that allows the leg to go all the way around and uh, at the knees there are two joints uh, so they both hinges so you can move the leg uh, that far uh, back and this far forward and uh, the uh, feet here have a combination of uh, ankle joints uh, which is uh, kind of neat there is a uh, peg joint uh, going into the leg that allows the uh, foot to go all the way around as well as uh, forward a bit and back a bit and even side to side it what appears to be a ball socketed joint there and there's an additional hinge here at the uh, base of the foot uh, allows even better uh, articulation of the ankle so in combination of the upper joint and that lower joint you can get some nice decent range on the ankles there so that's uh, kind of cool and there's also a hinge to go up and down to go in combination uh, with that upper joint to provide a nicer uh, range of movement of the foot and then there is a toe hinge as well on this figure so really nice range especially here at the feet and I believe the feet are made of die cast metal so that's a uh, kind of cool this uh, provides a lot more stability so but uh, overall a great figure uh, or a character that I enjoy on the show it's just a really nice uh, a representation of G3 and uh, uh, I recommend it if you're a fan of the show and uh, or more into the uh, tech side of uh, common writers. Uh, these are there's a, a tech orientated uh, common writer. But this is my casual peek into the SH Figure Arts uh, Mask Writer G3 or Common Writer G3. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Oh, 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 o